Hello and welcome to this episode of BB Naz Kids. Oh, I have got a good one for you this evening. All right. If you're ready, we'll go ahead and get started. Let's pray first. God, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. We thank you for that love that is still present today. We thank you for that love that has been present for the past 2,000 years. Actually, since the beginning of time. Because you loved us so much. You gave us so many chances. Today, we're going to talk about something that is really its near and dear to my heart. So I pray that you would touch me this evening. Touch each one that's listening or watching this video. And I pray that, God, you would pour your spirit out upon them this evening so that they may be uh, a better person, a better Christian, a better uh, kid, a better wife, a better husband, better mom, better dad, son, daughter. I could go on for days talking about this, but may we be better than we were yesterday. And that's what it's all about is, is being who you want us to be. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. All right. So I want to get started in, into our lesson this evening. And I'm just going to tell you, this this is a rough one. Um, because we're going to talk about tests today. So, the American Test Anxieties Association, and yes, parents, that is actually a, an association. They do have a website. Uh, but they have uh, done some research, and they have, uh, they have charted these, um, these areas of, of test taking. All right, so if you look right there, uh, the very top, well, you can't see it because I haven't faded over there to that. Boom, now you can. So um, it looks like 22% of Americans, uh, now this is, this is grammar school. This is uh, kindergarten uh, all the way through 12th grade. This is not college. This is just uh, grade school. And it says here that 22% of people, of, of children that take tests, and, and kids, this is for you too. 22% of American children who take tests have high anxiety. Now, if you don't know what anxiety is, have you ever been in a situation where your heart started pounding really fast and, and you didn't know what to do and you felt like it was just going to jump out of your chest and um, you couldn't breathe well? Um, sometimes your chest hurts. Uh, I've had that actually happen to me. I've had a panic attack where I couldn't breathe. Uh, and Miss Angela, my wife, had to come and, and comfort me. And I, I remember that day, and I had a, that was a very anxious time. And I thought, I thought I was going to stop breathing, and my wife was going to have to call an ambulance. But I finally got calmed down, and the situation rectified itself. Now, that wasn't a test, okay? That was just me being overreactive, okay? Over, overactive, overreact. No, I'm not overactive. As you can see, I'm not overactive. All right, so I hate tests. I hate taking them. I get so confused when a test starts. I forget the answers. I do the math wrong. I misspell words. Um, I had a really hard time in college because I could not take a test well. So the very first thing that I did when I walked in onto SNU um, is I had to take my ACT. And I, I almost failed the dadgum thing because I hate tests. Now, um, and you probably hate tests too. But let's let's go back to this graph right quick. I, I don't want to I don't want to trouble you with all my details. Although sometimes I feel that you can benefit from what I've went through. So high anxiety. That's twenty two percent. Eighteen percent say that they. Um, have trouble or they are troubled when taking tests. Now look at this number right here. 40% of American people, American children, say they have low anxiety about taking tests. That means that, means that 
it's it's fine. They'll they'll take it. I mean, whatever. And then look down here at this little number, this 20% that says calm. 20% of Americans say that they don't care whether I mean that they're calm about taking a test and that it doesn't bother them and they can take a test whenever, however, it doesn't matter. Now, I, I wish that I w was able to take a test like that, but I'm not. So, I, I, I want to ask you some questions, okay? The first one is, what do you like about taking tests? If you like taking tests, what do you like about taking tests? You don't have to answer this or put it in the comments. Um, you, if, if you want, you can. Um, if you want to write it down, or if you want to talk to your your parents or guardian about it, that is more. That's that would be great because they really need to know how you're feeling when you're taking tests, when you're at school, when you're talking to your your friends and things like that. So you need to talk to your parents. But what do you like about taking tests? The second question is, what do you dislike? All right, this is the people that don't like taking tests. What do you dislike about taking tests? Okay. The third question is, do tests cause you to stress out? Does your heart beat real fast? Do you lose your breath? Are you not able to breathe well? Um, the, so that's signs of anxiety. And then the last question that I have for you is, do tests make you feel better about the information you are studying? Ooh, Pastor Donnie, that's a big one. Do tests make you feel better about the information you're studying? When I was in college, I had to take tests to make sure that the professors knew that I and myself, it wasn't just the professors, but the professors and me, to make sure that I was uh, absorbing the information. I, they want me to be like a sponge. Now, I wasn't like a sponge. I was like a brick. I fell fast, and nothing stuck, not even paint. So, as you can see, I'm all... Yeah, you can't paint. You can't make this look good. So, um, I didn't make it through college. I regret that, but I'm I'm over that regret. Well, I'm over that regret now. I did when when I first left, but I'm over that regret now because I know that God had a plan for me, um, and that plan was to be here with you guys. Um, and no, that's I'm not saying that this is where people who uh, flunk out of college goes. That is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that, that in my case, God had a plan for me. And that plan was for me uh, to be here with you. So, um, I, I want to, I'm not going to read Matthew uh, 4, 1 through 11, but this is talking about uh, the time when Jesus was tempted. All right. In some translations, it actually says tested. Tested. Okay, so let's go back to the to the slide here. All right, so Jesus had just been baptized by John the Baptist. Okay, God had sent a dove to light on Jesus. Light means land. Okay, I should have put land, but light. On Jesus' shoulder. And he says to everyone listening that Jesus is his son and he is well pleased with him. I'm paraphrasing, okay? And then Jesus is led by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, to the wilderness to be tested or tempted. Jesus was tested for 40 days and 40 nights, again and again and again, but we only hear about three of them. Now, this may sound familiar to you because two years ago, I, I taught this lesson to you. I taught this lesson about how Jesus was tempted and about how he um, overcame these temptations. So, let's talk about those for just a second. I don't know, I'm trying to move on real quick. The first one says, if you are the son of God, so he takes him to these rocks, uh, the, the tempter or the devil takes him to these rocks. And he says, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. This is what Jesus said. So I put I put in bold letters here what Jesus said. So after the after the number is what um, is what the enemy says. And then in bold letters, because I I think Jesus is boldly telling uh, the devil right here. It is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Deuteronomy 8.3 He spoke scripture to our tempter. 
And then the second one, so what, what he did was he took him up uh, to the very highest part of, of, this, uh, of this peak. Um, and, uh, well, hang on a second. So, um, he took him to the holy city, and he had him stand on the highest point of the temple, okay? And then he says, if you are the son of man, or the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, now, now Jesus said some scripture, now Satan's going to say some scripture. It is written, the Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. They will, they, uh, then you won't trip over a stone. Psalms 91, 11, and 12. Oh, so Jesus is caught now. Jesus is caught. And, and what, is, what, is, what, is, what is he going to do? Jesus is caught. Uh-oh, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Listen to this. And it says, Jesus says, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Deuteronomy 6.16 Now the last one, I find totally absurd. But that's just my opinion. You may find it absurd as well. But he says this. Hang on, let me get back to it. I'm, I'm clicking and, 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 and jiving. He says, uh, so he takes him, um, at this point, he took him to a very high mountain. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. We have no idea where this mountain is. doesn't say. Maybe it was, uh, maybe, maybe it was Mount Everest. It wasn't Mount Everest at that time, but maybe, you know, we don't know. Okay? So again, the, he, he took him up to a high mountain. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Splendor means their beauty. Okay, and then and then Satan says this: "All this I will give you," he said, "if you bow down and worship me." How is Satan going to give Jesus something that already belongs to him? Because Jesus gave it to the people, or God gave it to the humans to begin with, and Jesus and, and Satan had the ability to run rampant all over the earth. So. How is he going to give something that already belongs to God and Jesus? See, that, that's why I think it's absurd. It makes no sense to me. Now, this is what Jesus says. Away from me, Satan! For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Deuteronomy 6.13 Some translations actually say rebuke. And do you remember what the word rebuke means? It means push away. Get away from me. Get out of my life. Don't come near me. That's what rebuking means. Get away from me. And so we see here that Jesus has an answer for every temptation. That's what the Bible's for. That's why we need the Bible. That's why we need the Word of God. Because we don't know when the tempter will come. And that's why we need to have it in our mind and be prayed up. And, and know the word of God. Because, like I said, we don't know when the tempter is going to come. He may come by himself. He may send someone to uh, tempt us. He may send someone to, oh, take that marker and mark on the wall. It's not going to hurt anything. They can wipe it off. But, you see, that's the temptation. And that's the test. I hate tests. And now, so I wrote, oh, now I get it. So sometimes we have to be tested. Sometimes we have to be tried. You know, the New Testament says that, that gold is refined in fire. And that the impurities on top of gold, which is called dross. So you have this bowl, right? And it's not very big because you don't have a lot of gold, right? But you have this bowl. And you have a fire, and the gold goes in here, and all the impurities at the top are scraped off, and it's called dross. And you take the dross off, and what you're left with is pure gold. And, and the New Testament says that we have to be refined in the fire. Sometimes we have to get burned. Sometimes it hurts. Yes, it does. That night that I had my panic attack, it hurt. But 
it's good now because now I have a memory of that, knowing that Jesus helped me get out of that situation. So my question for you tonight is this. So the next time you are taking a test, remember Jesus passed his tests. Can you? And I'm going to leave it at that. Jesus passed his tests. Can you? God, be with my friends this evening, and I pray that you would help them to overcome the tests in their life. God, I know that there are a lot of them. There's some that I don't even know about, because God, I'm in another generation, but you do. And I pray that you would watch over my friends. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you guys Sunday. Remember, 5 p.m., we are bowling at the church. I'm bringing bowling to the church. So be here. There will be food. I think we're going to do hot dogs maybe uh, and some chips and drinks. So we're going to keep it simple, but we're going to do bowling. And then the other thing we're going to do is minute-to-win-it games. I'm going to play some minute-to-win-it games with you guys. So come prepared for some awesome games, awesome food, and bowling. All right, see ya. Bye.